Welcome to another video of tracking the changes which are happening in the world around us. The whole point of this series is actually to give you a bigger overall picture of what's happening and to give you a handle on the kind of change which is coming in the hope that you will make better decisions in terms of your business and life and everything associated with these two aspects. So let's discuss a little bit about the changes which are happening right now. And essentially where we are at is a phase transition or a stage transition between systems from the 19th century to the 21st. And I know this sounds a little bit weird because we're kind of skipping the 20th, but let's stick with me on this and I will show you exactly what's happening. Now essentially if we take a 19th century worker from one of the factories of that time and we put them into a modern working environment, sure enough technology will have advanced by orders of magnitude and will be amazed by it. But the essential um, structure of work will be the same. They will fit in quite nicely. There's going to be a set time to start work, a set time to finish work. There are specific tasks which you're appraised on in the execution of that work. And there's usually a supervisor of some description to make sure that the work gets done. There is obviously somebody who will reward you for having done that work. And at the end of the, of the day, you go home. At the end of the week, you get to enjoy the weekend. Nothing's changed. So trying to understand what is different in the 21st century is really the, liter quite literally sometimes, the million dollar question. If you understand it, then you can respond better. If you can respond better, then you can make better use of it. If you can make better use of it, you have a competitive advantage which nobody else has, and you'll be able to use it to your benefit. So let's try and see the shape of that change. Now going from a 19th century environment, 20, 21st century environment, we see a change, a gradual change admittedly, to the format of work itself. So we're going from hard skills which were required to a specific degree. In the 19th century, you had to be healthy, you had to be able to stand on your own two feet and work, I don't know, X number of hours each day and produce uh, X pieces of work by the end of it. In the 21st century, however, the hard skills for which you have been hired are incidental to the soft skills which you bring to the task. Being able to work in a team, being able to work under pressure, being able to make your own decisions, you exercise your initiative, take into account company objectives and company values and operate in that environment like the company actually is yours, is what gives you value in the new working environment as a working unit functioning in that environment. So, how do we achieve that? Well, this is the gradual shift which is causing so many problems and so much consternation. In order to get to the 21st century environment, we need to re-establish the guidelines and the rules which determine trust between employer and employees, between um, uh, sort of leadership and those who are being led, and also re-establish uh, the kind of context in, in which that work takes place and the reasons for that work taking place. This is where values are necessary. This is where a company that doesn't actually have an overall mission because it doesn't have an overall vision will find it very hard to energize and motivate its workforce to the degree that is currently required. So in a nutshell, the 21st century environment is giving rise to the power of the individual worker, not because anything has fundamentally shifted in the roles of the worker, um, uh, in the roles the worker will play, but because the requirements being made on them are now changing. No company worth its salt uh, is able to sort of uh, rigorously determine the actions of a particular um, a job or a particular uh, sort of employee to the degree that it will cover every eventuality. So in order to be covered in that in a different sort of um, ways that you, they would need to exercise their judgment and their um, initiative, they would need to mirror exactly what the company stands for. Which means now that the company actually has to stand for something. So we've come to what, in semantic search perhaps, we've known for some time, that companies now need to behave like people in terms of value and vision and mission, 
and people need to behave like companies in terms of professionalism and task orientated orientated completion objectives and professionalism. I really hope this helps.